I don't know about you guys, but the closer that we get to WrestleMania, which apparently is in 35 days, I really did not know about that, that it was that close away. But the closer that we get towards that point in the year, the, the closer that, or the act, the more hyped I'm actually starting to get. But uh, I have a fear, though, that right now I am going, I am the most hyped that I'm going to be for this road to WrestleMania. By the way, this is your WWE Fast Lane 2015 review. First, I want to thank everybody who live tweeted with me tonight. It was very fun. Uh, got to meet a whole lot more new people, and I hope that you guys stay tuned with me uh, as we dive into Monday Night Raw tomorrow night, and of course, WrestleMania in 35 days. Um, we're going to be going through every match and breaking it down and kind of giving you guys what I thought about the match. Um, so if you have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button. We are on the road to 800 subs. I know I've been on here for four years and that 1000 mark has always been looming, but I think we can finally do it this year. So without further ado, let's get right down to business. First match of the night, the six man tag team match that was made on SmackDown, uh, Cena's fired friends as, as some people would like to call them, uh, Eric Rowan, Dolph Ziggler and the Ryback, uh, took on the authority. Uh, Big Show, Kane, and Seth Rollins. This match was actually not that good. Um, then again, I'm sure you guys already knew that with uh, Big Show, Kane, and Dolph Ziggler. I'm sorry, not Dolph Ziggler. I just insulted Dolph Ziggler fans. Excuse me. I apologize for that. But uh, with Big Show, Kane, and Eric Rowan in the mix, Eric Rowan took a lot of punishment in this match. Uh, he even had a new jumpsuit. So, you know, that that kind of just makes me question as to, as to where they're going to put Eric Rowan uh, if he's even going to be on the card for WrestleMania. Um, Kane ends up actually getting the victory here, guys. Yes, Kane has not had a win. I think I read this on Twitter somewhere. Kane hasn't had a win since WrestleMania 29. That should tell you how long ago uh, uh, Kane has had a victory under his belt. Or at least, I, at least I think it's it's either, I don't know if that's him being on a winning team or him actually getting the pinfall, but he actually got the pinfall tonight. He pinned, I believe it was Ryback, I think. I'm not, I don't hold me to that, but, um. Uh, the match was just, it felt like it was very, it was dragging on. It was just kind of thrown on last second. But the biggest thing coming out of this match was what happened after the match happened. Uh, the authorities started beating up on the three guys. And all of a sudden, who comes out to make the save? None other than the Viper. Randy Orton making his return to the WWE. RKO's from out of nowhere to all, everybody in sight. Uh, Seth Rollins ran away. So that's giving us the thought of having uh, Ryback, or excuse me, Randy Orton versus Seth. Rollins at WrestleMania kind of finished that feud up so that uh, Rollins can probably move on to uh, possibly fighting for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Um, Randy Orton, to be honest with you guys, got the biggest pop of the night. So that should tell you how crappy this crowd has been. You would think that they'd probably be at a fucking Memphis Grizzly game. But then again, I think, aren't they like the number two seed in the West right now behind, behind the Warriors? I mean, this isn't a sports video, but, you know, this is to all the sports viewers watching right now. I believe the Memphis Grizzlies are actually doing really good right now. So, um, if I offended any of you guys on Twitter, I do apologize. But, uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to seeing uh, Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below. It's going to be a very technical match, and I think that's probably what a lot of us are going to enjoy out of it. So, Goldust versus Stardust is our next match, and... You know, it's just adding on to it. The crowd was dead the entire match. Um, I liked the the story going into it that Cody was kind of dead, and it's it it kind of has that 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 like storyline for that theme from the mask where it's like the persona takes over the human being, and now Stardust is the one saying Cody Rhodes is dead, and they're trying to get Cody back into back to being Cody again. But um. To be honest, it was very boring. It felt very dragged on, and I hope that this is not um, a preview of what we would get if Goldust versus Cody Rhodes really did happen. I feel that I hope that this is just kind of the persona Goldust versus the persona Stardust, and hopefully, when Cody Rhodes does come back, and we do, and if we do see Goldust and Cody Rhodes, that they are able to deliver. But um, this match really didn't. There was a botched finish, and that just took away from the entire match to begin with. Um, didn't even he feel like the, the ref counted the three, but uh, Goldust ended up getting the victory. Um, Stardust attacked him backstage and all sorts of crap like that. So it's just more it's just more feud advancement so that they can um, eventually bring Cody Rhodes back into the grand scheme of things and uh, probably give him something to fight for at WrestleMania. Maybe we do have Goldust versus Stardust at WrestleMania. I'm sorry, Goldust versus Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. We see Cody Rhodes come back and 
who knows? Maybe he he can go right back into the into the IC title hunt, you know, with with Bad News Barrett and Dean Ambrose and all of them. So let me know what you guys think about uh, Gold and Stardust down in the uh, comment section below. The third match of the night. The WWE Tag Team titles are on the line. The Usos versus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. And before I give my thoughts on this match, I want to give a special shout-out to my good buddy Ryan Davis, the king of wrestling, who he's been he's been the biggest Tyson Kidd fan that I know. And it it hurts. It hurts. I gotta I gotta give him props. He's been on he's been all on Tyson Kidd since day one. And they freaking did it, man. Tyson Kidd and Cesaro are your new tag team champions. This came completely out of nowhere. I thought the Usos were going to hold on to it uh, until WrestleMania, and then they were going to drop it to the Ascension or something like that. But it turns out WWE wants to fuel Tyson Kidd and Cesaro and gave them a tag team championship. So I believe this is Cesaro's first championship since the U.S. title uh, back in 2012, I want to say. And this is Tyson Kidd's first title in almost five years when he was with David Hart Smith in the uh, the Hart Dynasty. So um, to be honest, this was actually a very good match. I think up to this point it was obviously a match of the night because, hell, it topped uh, the other two crap fests that we got before that. But um, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro... I'm uh, I'm I'm starting to underestimate what they can do as a tag team. I know I'm pretty much the one that's on here, kind of scolding them and giving them giving them a lot of grief and everything. Because I'm sure you're going to tune into a lot of reviews tonight. They're going to be praising this and they're going to be in love with Tyson Kidd and Cesaro finally getting pushed and everything. I'm genuinely shocked that WWE actually went through with it. But um, I'm actually genuinely shocked for other reasons too, and we'll get to that uh, later on in the review. But Tyson Kidd and Cesaro finally did it, and. Uh, Man, Ryan Davis, dude, you get mucho credit from me, man. Congratulations, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you've got to say on the Shoot Wrestling Podcast about this. So uh, that link will be down in the description box as well as his channel. And uh, if he wants his Twitter down there, I'll put his Twitter down there. I'm sure he's listening to this right now. So um, let me know if you want to put your Twitter down there. But uh, very good match here, very good match here. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what they have um, in store for this kind of feud. I mean... Maybe this injects some sort of personality into Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. Um, I don't want to diss them by saying that, but let's let's be realistic here. I mean, they aren't really the best um, team on the side of character, you know. It seems like they kind of just were given this kind of like those two guys in NXT. Um, I still don't know their names. Um, Murphy and Drake or Murphy and Blake. Blake and Murphy, I think. Is that what it is? Is that Blake and Murphy? Yeah, it is Blake. See? I'm getting this shit. Damn. Fourth match of the night, Nikki Bella versus Paige. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we'll talk about it right after. Nikki Bella versus Paige for the Divas Championship. A lot of you guys are going to be bitching about this because Paige did not walk out Divas Champion. But um, I was satisfied. I thought it was a pretty good uh, pretty good match for, for the Divas, of course. Of course, this is being held to a much lower standard um, than I do for the NXT Divas. Um, but Nikki's improving in the ring, and you guys aren't really giving Nikki a whole lot of credit. I mean, ever since she got her first championship opportunity um as this new heel with the the uh the the match at night of champions with aj and page ever since then she's kind of been growing in the ring of course she hasn't been growing on the mic because hell she's on commentary every other fucking week trying to you know build this shit up but she's been growing in the ring and you guys aren't really giving her a whole lot of credit here the bellas are actually turning into pretty good technical wrestlers yes i said that and i know a lot of you guys are actually at this point in the review and you're probably calling bullshit on that so and of course we already know how good page is in the ring um, so, I, I was satisfied with it. I personally thought it was okay. Um, having the tights, um, be pulled just basically gives us few, uh, feud some more fire, and we could possibly see this at WrestleMania. Um, so, that's that. Let me know what you guys think about that. Also, let me know what you guys think about, uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro winning the Tag Team Championships. Now, we can finally talk about this. Actually, this happened before the Divas Championship, um, but I still want to get to it. Sting and Triple H, the face-off finally happened we finally saw sting and triple h in the same ring at the same time triple h came out there with his leather and and he had his his taped up fist like he's ready for a damn fight and sting it's amazing because wwe really is building this match up and by the way before i um start actually talking about it Sting versus Triple H has been made official for WrestleMania 31. They had the match card already set up for it. It is official. String will be taken on trips. 
at WrestleMania 31. So let me know what you guys think about that, of course, down in the description box below. Expect a lot of videos being made, especially um, over the next couple weeks, because I do want to talk about the WrestleMania card and kind of breaking it down and giving you guys my full thoughts on it uh, rather than just kind of a glimpse and, um, you know, just, just kind of... Just kind of glossing over all the matches instead of actually going in deep into this match. Um, but it's amazing how much they're getting this feud over without having Sting say a fucking word. The man didn't even have a mic in his hand, and this match is over. Um, like I said, the crowd was absolutely dead. The crowd flipping sucked dick this entire goddamn event. Um, but... Uh, we had the return of Sting's bat, and Triple H on the mic, by the way, was fantastic. I do want to give him props for that, because he does not get enough credit for what he does on the microphone, and what he did on the microphone tonight was just enough uh, to get me even more hyped into this feud. Um, so, I'm expecting a lot more uh, good build-up coming out of this. So, um, Sting made the challenge, Triple H obviously accepted, and... Stingers versus Triple H for WrestleMania 31 has been made official. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below. Uh, do, 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 do. WWE Intercontinental Championship match. Bad News Barrett versus Dean Ambrose. Um, This match was given to us very early. Um, I felt that this match probably should only be done once. And... Well, not really just once, but if you're going to do it once, at least do it and have a finish to it. I mean, Dean Ambrose ended up getting disqualified, and that's going to be how they keep this feud going. Um, a lot of just, you know, screwed up finishes or just disqualifications to begin with. So um, we're going to be getting Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt, or excuse me, uh, Dean Ambrose versus uh, Bad News Barrett for the IC Championship. Uh, again sometime, and don't get me wrong, this is going to be a pretty good match. I mean, they even, they used a lot of the time on the pre-show to build this up, and I know that was kind of a contradictive statement by saying they built it up on the pre-show, but they built up the this IC Championship match. You guys don't understand, that that pr that promo video that was put on the, on the pre-show was pretty damn good. I know a lot of you guys are probably listening to me like, what pre-show, you know, so... <laughs> that's on the WWE Network for the low, low price of free 99 uh, at least for the next six days. And by the way, like I said at the beginning of this month, if you do not want to pay nine ninety nine for next month for the WWE Network, I suggest you cancel it sometime this week. You don't have to do it tonight. You don't have to do it tomorrow. Just make sure you do it before February 28th, before they bill you again. I'm speaking from experience, you guys. Do it, because they will charge you again. Um, after this, we had uh, the culmination of many, many cryptic promos from Bray Wyatt, and we had the big reveal that Bray Wyatt has been talking about uh, The Undertaker this entire time. Like, we did not know that. Damn. So they are going through with The Undertaker coming back to WWE, guys. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is quite shocking. I mean, I didn't know. I'm sure none of us knew that Bray Wyatt was really talking about The Undertaker. I'm sure he was talking about the Shockmaster. I mean, they, they've they been bringing w, WCW back into the conversation. I mean, they they were probably thinking, you know, maybe maybe Shockmaster canceled on him. Maybe they, he just, like, I can't make WrestleMania. Or, or, you know what, maybe he took a stone cold. Maybe he just said, you know what, fuck you guys. I'm not going to put Bray Wyatt over at WrestleMania. So they're like, okay, well then fuck you, Shockmaster. We'll just go to The Undertaker. And that that was, that's what, you know, that's the thing. So Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker, it's not official until The Undertaker does um, respond to Bray Wyatt. But um, I want to hear what you guys have to say because this is probably going to be my first video made um, regarding this match i do want to talk about this match in a, in a completely different video in a completely different video i don't want to even talk about this until that video does come out so please if you made it this far into the video stay tuned this week i will be posting some sort of video talking about bray wyatt and the undertaker i promise you guys that i will be posting something because this is a match i really do want to talk about and not just because that, that this is WrestleMania time, and this is around the time where all the matches start kind of um, 
coming coming centerfold. But this is a very important match, and it's a very interesting match, and I really do want to hear what you guys have to say about it. So, um, And I know that's going to be a broken record. This entire video is what do you guys think about it. But this one, when, I, when, this, when this video comes this week, I do want to hear what you guys have to say because that is the entire reason I'm making said video. So... Um, we are 15 minutes into this. I'm I'm really starting to think to just make these things a damn podcast. I mean, I mean, I I mean, right after this, I mean, I just kind of I just kind of edit. So so I still got two more matches to talk about. So um, and by far they're the two most interesting matches of the night. The WWE United States Championship match, or excuse me, the United States title is on the line. Rusev defending against John Cena. This match is going to go down as a submission for John Cena, although he did not tap. And this match proved it, you guys. I'm going to sit back and enjoy it and relax because I've been saying it at least for a good two weeks now that this match between John Cena and Rusev, as a matter of fact, this entire feud with Rusev and John Cena has been the best booked shit on the main roster. And tonight proved it with that goddamn with the finish that made Rusev look stronger than fuck and he still got the victory. It wasn't some crappy DQ finish like we were all thinking or some crappy count out finish that we were all thinking. It was a clean cut victory the way he's put many away in the past. So let me know what you guys really think about this. John Cena and Rusev right now, I think I they have the most interest besides Sting and Triple H for obvious reason. But Rusev and John Cena are, I think personally, this was a damn good match. I think a lot of you guys really kind of gave a lot of shit to this match because John Cena was able, you guys were able to hear John Cena uh, kind of call a lot of spots in hell. I would like to blame the crowd for that because the crowd was that damn dead, um, but I really can't make any excuses for that. But I think the match is pretty good. Um, Rusev... Just he's just made to look like this unstoppable force, like Cena's never even seen before. So, um, yeah, I mean, I know that I'm I'm kind of quiet on this. I kind of made my point already that this was the best book shit. Then again, that really doesn't say a whole lot because a lot of this shit that we have up to this point, um, it's kind of on the shitty side, isn't it? Um, I mean, hell, it took Bray Wyatt like almost a month and a half to tell us that he was calling the undertaker out i mean i'm sh- i'm sure he kind of thought we all assumed who we, we knew who he was talking about um you know me of course was thinking the Shockmaster, but um yeah i mean Shockmaster can have his wrestlemania moment shit i mean why not um but yeah i think what do you guys think about having rusev kind of um lose to to john cena because that's that's the way it looks like they're gonna uh gonna be going with wrestlemania i personally i don't like it i think that rusev should get some sort of clean i mean i could have dealt with not having the match tonight and have the first match be at wrestlemania and then have rusev uh get the victory over john cena i think that would have been much better than than having rusev kind of just win in a in a awkward anticlimactic fashion that obviously is going to sprout uh, a rematch in which Cena's gonna you know dominate again and then probably at extreme rules which I'm hoping to go to like I've been telling you guys for numerous months now we see the culmination and then maybe we see Rusev finally go over and Rusev becomes a top guy in the company that's the way I'm thinking that's the way I hope it goes but only WWE can really decide at this point. I think Rusev has what it takes to t- to to kind of be at the top because WWE had that chance to pull the plug on Rusev um, after the Ukraine was it U- the Ukrainian Airlines thing that that the the airplane that went missing. They had the opportunity to pull the plug on that if you guys remember, but they they didn't. I mean, they kind of held him off that the show for that day, but he was back in the grand scheme of things the next week. So. Um, WWE is going to capitalize here what they did not do uh, with Muhammad Hassan back in 2005. So, um, seriously, let me know what you guys think about Rusev um, getting the win over John Cena, and do you guys do you guys want to see a rematch between John Cena and Rusev? So, final match of the night, the main event to determine who will be going on to face Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 31. Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. Now, this is going to go down 
at least up to this point, is Roman Reigns' best singles match in WWE. And that's not saying too much because Daniel Bryan can have a good match with a fucking broomstick, and we've already disclosed this. But um, Roman Reigns looked like a damn boss. And I hate saying that because I hate I, I hate entering that world of 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 2015 swag slash, you know, what the hell is that called? Uh, street talk. You guys get what I mean. Like the whole bay shit and and there's another there's another word that I don't know. I'm sure there's tons of them, but Roman Reigns looked like a goddamn king off of this. He looked amazing in the ring. He looked well, at least I don't want to say in the ring. Don't don't jump on me for that. But Daniel Bryan. Putting him in the ring with Daniel Bryan did work, I guess, up to this point. Now, you guys already kind of thought that this was going to be a lose-lose situation. Whoever, someone was going to be bitching at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, I can honestly say I'm sitting here and I really don't see anyone that's actually kind of bitching about this. I mean, of course, a lot of you, I mean, I'm sure that it's going to take a little bit to sink in. Having Roman Reigns get the clean victory over Daniel Bryan and now he's going on to face Brock at Mania. But you got to give WWE credit where, where, you know, where give them credit when it's due. They've stuck to this plan for the last year now, I mean, with, with, with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. This has been a rumor for the last year, and it's finally uh, kind of come to fruition over the last couple months with Roman winning the Rumble. But um, you got to give them credit for, for staying on it and not giving in to the Smarks and giving in to the, the IWC and putting... Daniel Bryan into this match, and the only question coming out of this match is where does this put Daniel Bryan? Does does he have some sort of thing going on with Sheamus? Do they do they turn Dolph Ziggler heel and f- have him face him? Like like a lot of people are thinking, what do you guys see the future for Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 31 being? Because it's obviously not going to top what he had at last year's WrestleMania. And this was a pretty good match. It was easily match of the night, but Roman Reigns looked strong as hell. If I if I could make an MVP, it'd be it'd be up to him and Rusev personally. I think uh, him and Rusev were the 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 best coming out of tonight. At least in my opinion, I think that's the that that's what uh that's what I'm thinking, but let me know what you guys think about WWE Fastlane down in the comment section below. We've reached the end of the video and uh yeah, Go check out my Twitter, at the PTE Show. Please friend me on Facebook. I know a lot of you guys like talking about wrestling. Uh, this is kind of like the free plug party at the end of the show. Um, I know a lot of you guys like talking about wrestling, so you guys can go check me out on Facebook and uh, write to me anytime. I mean, I'm sure it's something you know, something you guys like to, to, to talk about or something. Maybe there's a, a certain incident or a certain debate that you're having with a friend of yours or something and you'd like to get my input. Please. Please friend me on Facebook. Uh, that shit will be down in the description box below. Also, hit that subscribe button down there. Let me know that you care. We are 10 subs away from 800. We are like 310 or 210 away from uh, 1,000, which is our big goal here. So uh, hopefully we can get that by the end of the year. And it's up to you guys, the best fans in the motherfucking world. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about all I got to cover. So... Let me know what you guys think about the pay-per-view down in the comment section below. Please uh, go check out all those links down in the uh, description box. Also, go check out Ryan Davis. I just mentioned his name a couple minutes ago talking about the tag team title match. And that's about it. Hopefully, you guys stay tuned for my Raw review tomorrow night. And a lot more videos coming in the next couple weeks talking about WrestleMania because we are on the official road uh, to WrestleMania now. So next time I will be coming to you guys on a Sunday night will be for WrestleMania. So uh, that's going to be about it. I am out. Perry the Entertainer signing out. Peace. I'm seriously thinking about posting this shit as a podcast. I mean, 20 minutes. Damn. I don't I, I just don't know when the hell to shut up, do I? Oh, we still recording. Peace.